Welcome. Today I will be showing you how to make your weapons OP in Bloodborne. The essence of this method are the Curse Tempering Damp Gems with a rating of 19. They offer the highest damage bonuses in the game. What we are aiming for are the 27% boost gems with a negative effect of stamina consumption or weapon durability. These are ideal negative effects and interchangeable depending on which weapon you are using. With that being said, let's get started. So you just started another character in Bloodborne and want to jump straight into the grind for the meta? Well, pick a starting weapon of choice that's loosely centered around your build. If you are going for a strength build, pick up the Hunter's Axe. Or if you are going for a dex build, pick up the Saw Cleaver or Threaded Cane. Or you can just pick by your preference, it doesn't really matter. You should find upgrade materials along your journey through the game that will get your base weapon upgraded enough to survive until you find better weapons. Basically, this part consists of just going through the game normally, getting shit that you'd already get in a normal playthrough, but centered around whatever build that you want to create. And uh, once you've progressed far enough in the game to acquire your weapon of choice, the next thing we want to do is focus on getting it to plus 10. You can do this by progressing through the game far enough until you start to find chunks, and eventually rocks. Also, utilize the many blood gems you come across in your journey as temporary boosts for your weapons and then swap them out for the better ones that you find. Where we want to be now is at least with a plus 10 weapon and end game progression to carry on to our next step. At this point, you want to be far enough through the story until you have killed every artist and have acquired all three chalices from each boss and the materials in the base game. Finish each chalice and get their root counterparts and pick up as much ritual material you'll find along the way. Complete all the Thumeru, Loran and Iz chalices until you receive their rarest root chalice versions. Then conduct the rituals with the max offering on the altars for them. You will find the ritual materials required for them along the way through the dungeons, or by farming them if needed in the dungeons. Check the wiki for the items that you need if you are low on supply. When you have created a max offering of a root chalice, you have basically met the requirements in game to search for any dungeon with the same depth difficulty online. These dungeons have been conducted by other people online and they house specific layouts and loot via a glyph or a code. The glyph is basically a name for the layout in a way. By searching for other people's glyphs, you do not waste your own resources, but utilize someone else's that already has that chalice resting on their altar. In other sense, you do not need any material to go and into this dungeon and farm for shit. You can farm a specific layout infinitely just by searching and joining via the glyph. At this point, we will need the Ahil, Lower Loran and Iz Root Chalices for our farming methods. After creating a max offering of the Iz Root Chalice, use the glyph Gem Jimpy, J-E-M-M-J-M-P-I on an empty altar to farm for blood rocks and bloodstone chunks. For the many weapons you want to get to plus 10, this would be the best strat. Just before the first boss room, there is a bonus room with the Great One's wisdom in the chest. Collect it, and then defeat the boss. After defeating the boss, return to the Hunter's Dream and remove the chalice from the altar, and then search for the same glyph on that altar again for another run. Rinse and repeat. You get 2 insight every boss defeat, and 2 insight when you pop the Great One's Wisdom that you found in the chest. And basically, each run yields you 4 insight, and 1 or 2 chunks depending on the boss RNG and what he drops. The When you kill the boss, he can drop 1 chunk or 2 chunks, which would net this at least a blood rock every 15 runs, and a plus 9 weapon every 15 runs. So... Each, I'd estimate that take an hour, so every hour you get a plus 10 weapon. This is a really good method and I suggest 
this would be the best way to get everything done. After having 60 insight from popping the Great One's Wisdoms and defeating the boss over and over, you can buy a Blood Rock straight from the insight shop. Note, if you haven't killed Murgo's Wet Nurse yet, which is an endgame boss, you cannot purchase Blood Rocks. Use the code PWMF22GU on an empty altar to search for a dungeon that houses the first boss that will drop the radial rating of 19 gems. Farming the blood gems with a rating of 19 is the meat of the operation. This is where it gets uh, mind bending because the, the drop rates are very scarce for the 19 gems and when you do get it, it's so satisfactory. You will find a lot of gems with negative effects that you do not want, but don't let this affect you. Keep strong and keep finding that one that you need. For the triangular gems, use the code YZB3QRHR on an empty altar to search for that glyph and farm the first boss in the room, which is the Merciless Watchers. This boss also drops arcane counterparts for the physical attack, which does boost arcane damage, but arguably physical attack does a lot more damage because it's not split. But if you are looking for uh, elemental versions of these gems, they do not exist, they only come. The highest percentage you'll get in elemental will be 22% with split damage for something else. Use the glyph JVZ8469J on an empty altar to search for a dungeon that houses the first boss which will drop rating 19 circular gems. These are uh, particularly great for lost versions of blood tinge weapons, particularly the Chicago, and uh, guns. Circular gems are mainly just for blood tinge scaling and I've tested out the circular gems are inferior to the actual radial physical attack gems on a Chikage are fully upgraded and when you shoot the gun it doesn't consume stamina or it doesn't degrade durability so half of the negative effects for the circular gems on guns are redundant it's fucking amazing man use the code ENJIDS45 or ENGINES45 like an engine I don't know to farm for waning shaped gems which do also drop in elemental versions but as I said before only do 22% boost for damage in that elemental variant and they drop from the silver Loran beast the Loran silver beast I don't know this guy is fucking a cakewalk this if you're looking for these shaped gems this is the easiest the hardest part about this whole farming run would be trying to get to the actual boss and the boss like dies within two seconds. The tempering damp gems are the prefix that we're looking for. The only problem is it's hard to find weapons that are just pure arcane. Half of them are split and you get much more effect from the boosting attack percentage than you do as a flat add rate. In conclusion, the cursed gems with a rating of 19 are the most powerful gems the game has to offer, at an accessible farming rate. I say this because you can farm the abyssal rating 20 gems from the last boss of a depth 5 dungeon, but the way to do that you save scum, it's not very practical and it's not very get go like farming the first boss in the room is. I hope this video serves at least as a blueprint for getting your weapons to their maximum potential even if you just start another character and want to get back into Bloodborne. As an addendum, the elemental versions of these gems can be farmed from NPCs in the Cursed uh, Root Chalice dungeons and first bosses in specific layouts. I hope you guys enjoy your new builds. Happy hunting.